In this video, I'll be spending 100 days on the Anubis MC server on the Origins Realm as a Pokemon Hunter. I'll be catching Pokemon to complete as much of the Pokédex as I can, completing Poke Hunts to gain various rewards, and training my Pokemon to defeat the gyms so I can become the strongest on the server. You can also join the server yourself. The IP is play.anubismc.com. Be sure to download the Pokemon Ultra Mod Pack in the description for a free Master Ball when you log in, as well as a lag-free experience. Day 1, it was time to choose my starter Pokemon. This server had custom starters, and my favorite among them was definitely Eevee. So for those that don't know, back in the day I had a Pokemon channel, I was kind of a Pokemon master myself, so I know pretty much everything there is to know about Pokemon. I now had my starter, this cute little Eevee. I also had a Pokeball voucher that I used for 8 repeat balls, and I had a Master Ball and some other cool stuff in my inventory. I took a bit of time to explore the spawn, look at the menu, which had some kits and stuff that I could claim for Pokeballs and other useful items. But I'd worry about all that later, for now I wanted to get to work on the basics. I used the slash RTP command which teleported me into a cave, which is honestly pretty good. There's plenty of ores here that might be useful later on. I mined for a bit and then I saw a Zubat, and I actually am a very big fan of Zubat. So I threw a Pokeball and while I was mining diamonds, it worked, and now I had a Zubat. I mined a bit more from that cave and then I used the slash RTP command to find a new place, and I ended up in a forest. Then I made my way over to a mountain and I tried to catch a Starly, but that didn't work. I ran around grabbing the these apricorns in this mountain biome because they could be used to make pokeballs later on. I spent the next while looking for a place to live because I wanted to get established before I started hunting Pokemon for my team and for the Pokedex. I traveled through forests, deserts, oceans, and then I realized that there's a slash biome RTP command. This command was amazing. It let me choose a biome and I decided on roofed forest. I was gonna live there and then I realized that it'd be a total pain to clear, so I just grabbed some dark oak wood and kept going. I then found a nice little area in a forest and I had a river and I decided that I would clear it out and make it my home. And yeah, after clearing it, I claimed the area and I got the building. I usually plan what I'm gonna build at least to an extent before starting a video, but this time I had no idea so I just started placing stuff. I made this elevated platform of dark oak and normal oak in a weird pattern, and then this mega Alakazam boss shows up out of nowhere, which is cool, but there's no way that I can beat that right now. Then I ended up making this house's walls out of birch fences, and I've never really seen that done before, and it looked unique. At the very least, you've definitely never seen a house like this one before, right? All right, next I wanted to get a PC and a healer in my house. I went to spawn to see how much they cost, and they were each 1,500 bucks and right now I had 500. I saw some text in front of the shop area that said that I could win money by voting for the server, so you know what? Why not? I voted and I had a bunch of these voting keys and I went to open them. I opened them all and I got all kinds of really cool stuff in my inventory, including a park ball, which for those that don't know is another kind of master ball. I also now had $5,500, so I went to the shop and I bought a healer and two PCs. I went home and I placed a healer and a PC and I would keep the other PC in my inventory for using out in the world. Now that I had a house with chests, I decided to claim all of the kits that I had. I got tons of random Pokeballs, some TMs, a lot of rare candies, and stuff like that. These kits were super worthwhile, and I was now ready to go catch some Pokemon and train my team. Also, at some point I got this Ekans, and I don't really know how, but yeah, Ekans. This server had this really cool bingo board system, and if I caught a Pokemon on this page, I'd get rewarded with money and even a random key if I finished the whole thing. One of the Pokemon was Pidgeotto, which just so happened to spawn near my house. I went over and found one flying in the sky, and I started a battle with it. I threw a quick ball hoping to get it easily, but... Nope, that did not work out, and my Eevee got bodied. I threw an Ultra Ball next, and I caught it. I checked my bingo board, and the Pidgeotto now showed as caught. I decided that next I wanted to hunt down a Blitzel, but after spending a whole day in the savannah biome looking, I had zero luck. I decided the whole bingo thing would be better for later on whenever I was more equipped to do it, so instead I wanted to try a quest. This server has these tiered quests where you can work your way up through tiers and get good rewards. I decided I wanted to try out the Catcher quest. For the novel this catcher quest, I had to catch 25 normal types, 25 grass types, and 25 water types. This would give me a chance to catch a bunch of Pokemon while getting rewarded for it, which was perfect. I teleported to a beach and I began catching water types, starting with Magikarp. I didn't stay in the beach for too long though, and I ended up heading over to a swamp. I just ran around catching a bunch of Pokemon, traveling to different biomes like swamps and plains and mountains, anywhere that I could think of. I was in a jungle one night, and in it, I saw a pink 
Mankey. Now, I have no idea how rare that was, but Mankey is not meant to be pink, and Mankey is super sick, so I got it. I even decided that I was going to use it on my team, because who doesn't want a pink primate? I then ended up warping to the server safari area, and this was definitely the place to get the quest done. There were tons of Pokemon spawning everywhere, especially grass types. I ran around catching tons of stuff, but after a while I realized that this does not work for the quest, because they're from spawners. It would be really good for the Pokedex, but unfortunately not not requesting. Around night 9, I was in an ice biome and I found these icy rocks. I leveled up my Eevee using a rare candy and it evolved into Glaceon. This is without a doubt my favorite Pokemon of all time and it is objectively the best Pokemon and your opinion is probably wrong if you disagree. Anyways, I was really hyped to have one, even if it was level 6. I found a beach the next day and I just caught everything inside, tons of Krabbies and Wingles and everything. By day 11, I had caught all of the water type Pokemon required for that quest and I also had about half of the normal types and like no grass types, however, very good progress. Hey, by the way, isn't it kind of crazy how only 10% of people that watch my videos are subscribed? If everyone watching right now were to sub, I'd hit like a million subs or something like that. Just saying. Anyways, my goal now was to finish the quest. Starting on day 11, I ran around catching a bunch of normal types, Squovets and Taigas, and a lot of Sentrits in the Plains biome. Pretty quickly, I had all the normal types completed, and I just needed grass. During that, I got this skill key from leveling up my catching skill on the server's skill system because I'm very skilled at catching Pokemon. Yeah. I went over to the crate and I opened the key and I got some more money, which was very nice because I was very low on Pokeballs. I went to the shop and I bought as many Ultra Balls as I could, so now I could get grass types for my quest. That is if I could find them. I was not having luck with grass types at all. I ran through flower forests and jungles and everything and just no grass types. But then I ended up in a roofed forest. There were actually grass types here. Not as plentiful as the water or normal types were, but they at least existed, so I stuck around and caught as many as I could find. Mostly bell sprout, to be honest, but still. And I also went to a taiga biome during the nighttime because I really wanted to find a Rowlet. Rowlet evolves into Decidueye, and Decidueye is sick. So I wanted to get one, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't find one. The Rowlet hunts were worthwhile for another reason though, because in a taiga one night, I found a completely untouched village with tons of potatoes. That was great because I literally just ate the last of my steak and I had no food left. I also was able to buy some great balls from the village's shop that night. The next night in the taiga, I finally finished the quest. I threw an ultra ball at a fungus, I caught it, and that was my 25th grass type. I spent the rest of night 15 looking around for a Rowlet and uh, yep, it's Still no luck. Day 16, I was back home cooking my potatoes. I was now able to sort through all the items that I got while traveling, and I had a lot of really good health items, including lucky eggs that would help me train my team. In case you're unaware, when a Pokemon holds a lucky egg, it increases the experience that it gains. I also then remembered to actually claim the quest that I completed, so I did that, and I got tokens, money, evolution stones, and three voting keys. I redeemed them, and I got a voting pickaxe, an axe, and some berries. Upgrades to both of my main tools. Nice. Now my goal was to get a good team trained up. I had plenty of Pokemon that I caught, however they were all water, grass, and normal types mostly, so not a lot of variety. The four that I decided to use were my starter Glaceon, my pink Mankey, a Deerling, and a Noibat. I went ahead and used rare candies to evolve my entire team, so now I had a pink Primeape, a Sawsbuck, and a Noivern. I gave the rest to my Glaceon to get it a bit more caught up. Now I had a team. Of four at least. The best part? I could fly on my Noivern. I went back to a Taiga that night in hopes of finding a Rowlet with the better mobility. And yet, no, no Rowlet. Now, I really wanted a Rowlet, and I knew that this server had a GTS that was basically a market where players could sell Pokemon and items. I checked it out, and there were tons of good Pokemon here. There was good Pokemon, good items, all of it. I looked through it, and there was no way that I could afford most of it, but at the end, I saw something really interesting. A rogue Crobat, and I could afford it, so I bought it without hesitation. This was one of the server's special textures, and it looked really cool. Crobat is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, so I'll definitely take that. I also remember that I had these tokens and I checked out the Poke Builder in the menu and I was able to fully customize my Pokemon at the cost of tokens. I put my Glaceon in a dive ball because why not? And I couldn't afford too much else so that was all I did. Now I really wanted to get money. Money was like everything. It would help me train my team, I could get more Pokeballs, it was really important. I decided to try out a Poke Hunt. There were various difficulties but the higher ones cost tokens 
So I wanted to try out a medium one first. I did a medium one and I had to find a female palpitoad that was either runt, huge, or enormous. That seemed straightforward enough, so I went to the swamp biome. I found a temple immediately which evolves into palpitoad, so that definitely worked for the hunt. However, that one was male, so it wouldn't work. This hunt ended up being way harder than I initially realized, taking ages just to find the temples and palpitoads, and then they were all male, so I couldn't even check the size. Then I finally found a temple that was female. When I caught it, I checked the size and it was huge. This would work for the pokey hunt, I just had to evolve it, which is at level 25. I gave it a lucky egg and I went to a desert. There were a ton of Pokemon weak to water here, so it should be pretty easy. I was at level 24, but then a legendary boss, Camera Up Spawn. I jokingly tried to beat it with my temple, but of course it does not work. However, this Camera Up only had ground moves, meaning it could not touch my Crobat or my Noivern. I was able to poison it with Cross Poison from Crobat and then swap to Noivern and take it out without any issue. I got a Camera Up Mega Stone, EXP Candies, and I unlocked Mega Evolution. That was an insanely lucky spawn. After that, I grinded up the Temple into a Palpitoad and then I delivered it for the hunt. And the hunt gave me a Metal Coat, which is cool, however, I kind of expected money. And that's what I get for not reading. The hunts have a completely random set of rewards, some of which are money, some of them are just really good items, so that's kind of on me. After that, I was looking for other ways to make money on the server. One of the big things that I saw was that by getting to 30% of the Pokédex, I could get 50k and a shiny key. Getting a shiny Pokémon was a big goal of mine, so this seemed like the best thing to do. I was checking these Nexus player shops, and I found one that sold a ton of Pokéballs for pretty cheap, and I wanted to get some money so I could buy those because they would help a ton with the Pokédex. That is when I realized that I could vote again because it had been 24 hours in real life. I voted, I opened the keys, and I, I got no money. After that, I decided that I would do a row of bingo. I saw a row that seemed pretty easy, so I went for it. I decided to check if the safari area worked for this, and oh yeah, it does. Within moments, I had three Pokemon off a row. I couldn't find the other two in the safari zone, so I went to the normal world to hunt them. I was looking for a gold bat that night for bingo, but instead, I was finally blessed with with a Rowlet. I weakened it with Noivern Super Fang and I caught it in a level ball. That immediately replaced the Saws book that I was using because I love the Sijuai way more. Then after a lot of searching, I finally found Mudbread. I caught that for the bingo and now I only needed a Golbat to complete a row and get some money. And Golbat was not liking me very much. However, I did get a skill key for taking fall damage a lot very skillfully. And after opening it, I got $10,000. That would definitely work. Screw the bingo, the spawns just were not working out for me. I immediately went and bought two stacks of quick balls, a stack of dusk balls, and a stack of level balls. These would help me get to 30% Pokédex for that shiny Pokémon. Next, I decided that I wanted to do a hard Poké hunt. It cost tokens to do it, but the rewards were much better, and I would just do it while catching other Pokémon for the Pokédex, so it works out. The Poké hunt was for Marini. This one was terrible, because Marini only spawns at the bottom of the ocean at midnight, which is a very short window. I decided that I would give it one shot and otherwise I would just spend the 50 tokens to abandon the hunt and do a different one. It hit midnight and I caught a few Pokemon while searching, but I saw zero Marini. Yeah, I just spent the tokens to reset it and the next hard one was a Magmar. Not bad, I could definitely try to do it even though it was really rare. Magmar spawns in deserts, so that's where I went and I began catching a bunch of stuff for my Pokedex. Catching stuff was pretty easy with these quick balls, I was one balling like everything. By nightfall I had not seen a single Magmar, but I remember that I had access to the super cool Warp Safari. It had a volcano in the center, which I went over to in hopes of finding Magmar. And, uh, no, they must have known of my expert strategy ahead of time because Magmar did not spawn here. I did catch a bunch of cool Fire-type Pokemon, though, so that was nice. I spent another entire day in a desert with no luck, and that's when I learned just how impatient I was. I once again cancelled the Magmar hunt and I decided that I would try one more hard one before I stick to the medium ones instead. This hard one was Pelipper, which in all honesty is way easier than both of the other two. While waiting for it to become morning, I caught a Gibble and completed 10% of my Pokédex. I claimed my rewards and I got a 
a bunch of money and a great key. I opened the great crate and I got a god shovel and yeah, definitely a good shovel. I then used some of those funds that I got to go buy some more dusk balls. I was then above the ocean and Pelipper were way easier to find. However, catching them was not so easy. It took like 25 level balls before I finally caught my first one. I then remembered that I could just catch wingles and evolve them into Pelipper, so I did that instead. I also then realized that the Pelipper that I caught was male and I needed female, so I shouldn't have even caught it. Nice. I spent the following night checking swamps trying to find a gold bat for the bingo, but no luck. At a point, I bought some repeat balls to help me try and get the right Pelipper. They let me catch Wingles without battling them a lot easier, so they would speed up the process a lot. But then one night, I was in my house, and then I realized that I could just totally cheat. I used the Poke Builder in my menu, and I just spent 30 tokens to make this Wingle the right size. I evolved it with rare candies, I tried to submit it for the hunt, and they said no. I should have expected that, but for for some reason I didn't. I then redeemed the kits that I had and one of the items that I got was the TM for Ice Beam. I taught that to my Glaceon immediately. I attempted the Wingles a bit more with absolutely zero luck but then finally on night 35 I found a goal back. I finally completed a row in the bingo board. Life was good. I claimed the money for it and I went to the GTS. I looked through all of the items in Pokemon on sale right now and I decided on buying this Beedrillite. I really wanted to use a Mega Pokemon and Beedrill was super Super cool, so that's what I'd go with. Right now, my ideal team was going to be Glaceon, Primeape, Decidueye, Rogue Crobat, Beedrill, and then whatever I got from the Shiny Key at 30% Pokedex. It might change, of course, but that's what I was working on right now, and then I could fight gyms and do all the fun battling stuff. In the GTS the next day, I saw a Weedle. A very good Weedle, and it cost $30,000. Right now, I had about 28,000, so I was close. This, once again, was another 24 hours in real life, so it's voting time. I voted and I did all the keys and I I got no money. And then I went present hunting. This server has these presents scattered throughout different areas that give $500 each so I went around and gathered a few of them throughout the spawn until I had enough money. I then went to the GTS and I bought my Weedle. A $30,000 Weedle, which in hindsight might not be the most worth it, but I don't care. I had these EXP candies from the voting crate, so I went home and used them to get my Weedle all the way up to a B drill. Then I used all these rare candies that I had, and I had so many rare candies. And my team was a little bit on the weaker side, so I got B drill all the way up to 54, Evolve my Rowlet into Decidueye, by the way, look how cool this thing is, and then I put the rest into my Glaceon. Now I had a stronger team, and I can Mega Evolve my Beedrill. A bit hard to see in this battle, but it's pretty cool. Now, because I did not complete the Pelipper hunt before, I decided that hard Pokey hunts just were not happening right now. For now, I would do a medium Pokey hunt while catching stuff from my Pokédex for extra rewards. First up, a female Mudbray. Mudbray fortunately spawns in both Plains and Extreme Hills biomes, which gives me double the areas to find new Pokemon to catch. I caught tons of stuff in the Plains, and after I stopped seeing too many new Pokemon, I went to the Extreme Hills. I ran around catching everything in sight. Then, just as the sun was about to set, a massive Mudbray spawned next to me. It was female too, and I caught it, and it was the right size for the hunt. I submitted and got Ultra Balls, which basically replaced the other ones that I used while, you know, hunting other Pokemon, so I'll take it. I couldn't do another Poke Hunt for at least an hour, so I just caught other stuff while I waited for the cooldown, including this Fampy that took, like, way too many balls to catch. It would just not stay in, and it kept running around saying, Fanfy, and it, it wouldn't stay in, bro. But then, eventually, I did finally catch it. I learned that I could do an easy hunt, and it was for a female Lillipup, so uh, yeah, back to the planes I go. I ran around waiting for the time that Lillipup spawns. It came, and after a bit, I finally found Lillipup, and the first one that I found was female. I caught it, submitted it, and got a free Dusk Stone, which I wasn't gonna use, but not bad. After that, I figured that I should just try and focus down the Pokédex. The best place to do that is definitely Warp Safari, so I went there. I started at the ice area, and there were just tons of Pokémon that I hadn't caught yet. Jinx, and Deli Birds, and Piplups, all kinds of cool stuff. Aha! Get it? Cool stuff? Because cool? Because ice? Yeah. Yeah. After catching what I thought was everything in the ice area, I went to the taiga area. I got Stuffle, Dedene, Togedemaru, this Noctowl that was somehow level 11. After just those two areas, I checked my Pokédex and I was up to nearly 15%. Yeah, I'd be at 20% in no time. I went to the desert area next and I had already caught most of the Pokémon that spawned in deserts from my attempts at the Magmar hunt before, but the Mesa was a whole different story. There was a ton of new stuff here, Litleo, 
Clink, Dwebble, Durant. This was a sick area for Pokemon. This Durant actually put up one heck of a fight and completely curb stomped my entire team before finally staying in the ball. And after that massacre, I found a Litten. Luckily, I still had a few Pokemon alive, so I was able to hit it with an Ice Beam and freeze it because I'm lucky like that. And then I caught the Litten. Litten. That joke wasn't even good. The Plains area had a surprising amount of new Pokemon, like Glam Yow and Miltank. The area after was a fairy flower forest thing, and there were just so many new Pokemon. Like, almost everything there was new for me. After that was a jungle area that had even more new Pokemon than the flower area. It was a lot of bug types, like Pinsir and Heracross, which were kinda hard to catch, but the Pokedex progress was definitely worth it. Next up, Ocean area, and once again, I had barely touched oceans, so there were, of course, once again, tons of cool new Pokemon here. I even found a Milotic at the bottom, which I felt was super rare. The next area was a swamp, and there wasn't a ton of new Pokemon, but the ones that were new were insane. Like an entire fully evolved Gudra, a pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Gudra is normally not the most common thing ever, so to get one like this was just crazy. After that, I was pretty much done with the Safari area. I caught most of the new stuff here. Not all, but most. And it did in fact get me to 20% Pokedex. I claim my rewards and I went to open a great key. It gave me an incense that would cause Pokemon to spawn around me more often, which is incredibly useful. I then instantly went and spent half the money that I earned on more Pokeballs because I definitely needed more. Starting on day 46, my only focus was that 30% Pokedex milestone. And I'm a Pokemon master, so I shouldn't have too much of a problem. I really wanted that free shiny Pokemon before I took on gyms, so I just traveled. I traveled traveled around catching any and all Pokemon that I had not caught before. In the chat, I saw that a flash hunt started. The first person to catch a male Dupiter with the right size would get a random key. I immediately teleported to a swamp and looked around, and I found a Dupiter, but it was female. In a new swamp, I saw a Dupiter that I could just not get in the battle with. I chased it, and I ended up just spamming Ultra Balls at it, and upon catching it, I actually won the flash hunt and I got an ultra key. I opened the crate and I got a TR for Iron Head. I checked the rewards that I could have gotten and that was probably the worst one, but oh well. Then at a point I realized that I could change my minimap settings so that I could have Pokemon icons on it instead of the dots. And that was just incredible for Pokedex completion. Anything I saw in the minimap that I knew I didn't catch yet, I could just run over to even if I wouldn't have seen it normally. The final thing that I caught on this Pokedex catching spree was this very resilient Dano. It's a lot of Pokeballs, but after a while, it finally stayed in. I checked my Pokedex the next day, and my progress was only at 24%. I still had 6% to go for my shiny, so I decided to try something that I'd been saving. I warped to the end. I really didn't want to ever come here because I didn't want to fall in the void and die, but there were tons of rare Pokemon here that I definitely did not have yet. I caught a few things, and then I chose to activate my incense here to hopefully get some rare spawns. And yeah, incense are just insane. I had Lunatone and Drampa and all kinds of really rare Pokemon spawning on me pretty quickly. I had caught almost everything in the end within like five minutes, and I decided to use the rest of my incense in the overworld. I'd basically just RTP, catch everything new that I saw near me, and then when spawns slowed down, I would RTP again, and repeat. It was pretty effective, honestly, and I got quite a few new Pokemon. After my incense wore off, I decided to go back to Warp Safari. I was now at 26% Pokedex, and I figured that the minimap discovery might help me find a few more things. That's when I realized that there was actually a whole mountain area that I never caught Pokemon in before, and it helped out quite a bit. I also learned that I missed a lot in the ocean, so I got a ton more there as well. By the end of that Safari run, I had like 28.5% Pokedex, and I was really close, yet really far. I used the skill key that I got during that, and I opened a crate, and I got three very good TMs. I then went and bought even more Pokeballs. The shop owner was even there, which is cool. This cheap items Nexus shop was the absolute MVP, supplied all my Pokeballs for the entire video. I was trying to find more stuff for the Pokedex afterwards, and I ended up finding a wild rogue Zubat. I didn't even know the server's special textures could spawn in the wild, but that was really cool. I was hunting for new Pokemon for ages, and one one night I found a Toxicroak and I caught it. I checked my dex progress and I had 29.9 7%. Literally 0.03% away from being at 30. So yeah, I had to go find one more Pokemon, which luckily was right in front of my face, a Pawniard. I caught it and I was now at 30% Pokemon. 
Pokédex. Let's go. I went to the shiny crate, which has a 10% chance of being a shiny legendary Pokemon. I opened it and I got a shiny Magearna. That is a legendary Pokemon. Like, that's insane. It was a 10% chance to get a shiny legendary and I got it. That is is incredible. It was now time to trade. I went to my favorite player shop and I bought an EXP all from them. This would let my entire party gain EXP every battle, which would help a ton. I then spent a while looking through Nexus player shops. It was hard to find one that sold what I wanted, but eventually I found it. I found one that sold power items. These items would let me EV train my Pokemon, which made them stronger in certain stats. They were expensive, but worth I bought the ones I needed and then I went to this server's EV training warp. This this place was amazing. It had trainers that gave tons of the needed EVs and they healed me after every battle. On day 61, I was blessed by the server owner with these exotic eggs. There were a few options that I could pick from to use these eggs on and they all looked really cool. I picked a cosmic one and I got a cosmic Yveltal. That's another legendary and it's like a 1% chance. That's crazy. Next, I did a blood one and I got a blood gibble. Then a moon one and I got a moon bailey. One of these glass ones and I got a glass uh, sun current. Okay, another glass one, and I got a glass piplup. Way better. All right, five more. I got a sun one to match the moon one, and I got a sun bagon. The last four, I decided to split between Egyptian textures and Anubis textures because they look really cool to me. I got Egyptian Arbok, and then an Egyptian Persian. Not exactly good Pokemon, but I'm sure the textures look really cool. Then finally, the two Anubis Pokemon, the first being Anubis Hoot Hoot. The second was Anubis Klefki, which once again, those are not very good Pokemon, but the textures are probably gonna look really cool. I flexed my Cosmic Yveltal on spawn because, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, you know, it looks amazing. And then I went home to check on the other textures. Blood Gibble was a literal demon. Moon Bayleaf was cool, but a little odd. The two glass Pokemon were really, really cool, and I definitely wanted to evolve them later on. Sun Bagon was cool and probably made an amazing Salamence. And then Egyptian Arbok was just gorgeous. Solid gold with blue gems and stuff. It was amazing. I would use it if it wasn't an Arbok. Egyptian Persian was cool too, but not even close to the Arbok. Then finally, a new Anubis, Klefki, and Hoot Hoot. They both looked really cool, but the Hoot Hoot was clearly superior. I decided that I was definitely replacing Crobat from my team because these Pokemon were just way too cool not to use. Yveltal was actually banned from the gym, so I would save it for something else later on. While I was thinking about my team, I went ahead and evolved the Glass Sun Kern into a Glass Sun Flora. I definitely would not use it ever, but it was cool. I decided on using Blood Gibble, and I made this very hard decision to replace Pink Primeape with the Sun Bagon. These were just way too cool not to use, and I really wanted to see them evolve. I was going to evolve some of the other ones as well, but I really wanted these two on my team. I went to Eevee train the Gibble and Bagon, and during that, the Gibble evolved into a Blood Gabite, and it looked insane. After the final Eevee training battle, my Sun Bagon evolved into a Sun Shellgon. Now, this thing looked intense. I then went over to the level grinding area, and this was way better than I thought for levels. Just a bunch of level 100 Blitzies that use Healing Wish to knock themselves out giving me a ton of free experience. The very first battle evolved my Sun Shellgon into Sun Salamence, and I love how this thing looks. The second battle, I evolved my Gabite into a Blood Garchomp. This was a literal demon, and I cannot get over how sick this thing looks. I grinded for a while more, and then back home, I sent out my full team of level 100 Pokemon. Yeah, at six level 100s, I'm pretty cool. I used the Poke Builder to change all of their natures to be better, and then I went to the Move Tutors of the server. These cost a lot of money, but I was able to get some really strong moves on my Pokemon. By the end of that, my movesets were pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Now, I needed to finalize my team's items and movesets. I had to buy a bunch of held items and TMs and likely some more of those move tutor moves, meaning I needed a lot of money. However, before that, I wanted to check out the evolutions of some of the textured Pokemon. I evolved the Piplup and Hoot Hoot, and then back home, I checked them out. The Prinplup looked exactly how I expected, but the Noctowl looked insane. The Noctowl was probably my favorite special texture that I had. It just looked so good. Unfortunately, Noctowl sucks, so I can't use it. I then evolved Printplup, and the Glass Empoleon was pretty cool. Next, I decided to do some tiered quests, and I should have accepted this one before I checked textures because it was to evolve five Pokemon, but that seemed easy enough. I grabbed five unevolved Pokemon from my PC, and then I went back to the Blissey Trainer. Needless to say, I had all five of my evolutions pretty quick. 
Check out this Moon Meganium, by the way. The next tier of that quest was to evolve 25 Pokemon, and it gave good rewards, and it seemed easy enough to do, so I did it. This actually took quite a while, and evolving so many Pokemon was not very fast. And then, after evolving, like, 15 Pokemon, I checked the quest and realized that I never accepted it. 25 evolutions later, I completed the quest and I opened a great key for 100 tokens. And in all honesty, I kind of wanted to continue that quest. The next tier required evolving specific Pokemon types, but they seemed really easy. I spent the next while evolving random Pokemon of those types from my PC. Once the quest was complete, I claimed it and opened those two keys I got for more tokens. I bought some TMs and tutor moves the next day and almost immediately I ran out of money again. All of that evolving and I still didn't have enough money. However, it is worth noting that I was super close to 40% Pokedex. That would give me 50k and a shiny that I might be able to sell. I went ahead and accepted the next tier of the evolution quest just in case I was able to complete it. Spoiler alert, I wasn't, and then I got to evolving some more Pokemon for my Pokedex. Very quickly, I did in fact get 40% dex completion. I went and opened the key, and I got a shiny Seviper. It was a cool Pokemon and a good shiny, but I couldn't really sell it for much money. The money that I got from 40% dex was enough for me to get all the moves that I needed, and now I just needed items. I went to a Nexus, and I bought an Electrium Z, and I put it on my Magearna. I then went to another one, and I bought a Leftovers that I put on my Garchomp. The last item that I needed was Choice Specs, but I needed more money for that. I was not able to accept a quest because I already had three accepted right now, so instead I decided to sell one of my special textures. I didn't care that much for the Anubis Klefki or the Egyptian Persian, so I asked in the chat how much I could get for one. While I was trying to figure out the GTS, my dude Cryptid Corn said he wanted to buy the Klefki. 35k, a very solid deal and more than enough for my choice specs. I did the trade and in all honesty, the community on the server was pretty chill. They called me a W YouTuber because I'm cool like that. Yeah. I bought my choice specs and I put it on my Glaceon and now my team was complete and ready to take on some gems. I decided to test my team's battling abilities at the server's battle towers. I had to take on the easy one first. The first trainer had some unevolved Pokemon and they were pretty easy to deal with. The second one was nearly soloed by my Glaceon, but then they had this stupid Cradilly that just would not die. Eventually it ran out of recovers and I beat that trainer as well with the Sidewise. Third battle was handled pretty easily by Glaceon, Salamence, Garchomp, and Beedrill. In the fourth battle, my Magearna put in the work and nearly swept the entire thing, and then from there, my Garchomp cleaned up. In the fifth battle, the NPC's first Pokemon only had Reflect and Light Screen and, like, some other move that didn't do damage. So I used Dragon Dance six different times with Salamence, and I completely swept. The sixth battle must have heard of my strat because it let off with a Lycan Rock and destroyed me with Stone Edge. However, after that, I was able to use Swords Dance with Garchomp to increase my attack, and then Scale Shot to give me a speed boost, and then from there, I just completely destroyed them. The seventh battle was actually surprisingly close. They had a Mesprit, and they kept going back and forth between it and a lantern, making it really hard to take either of them out, but eventually ended up beating it with Magearna. The next trainer led Articuno, but my Salamence outsped it and crushed it with Stone Edge. After my Salamence went down to a Bronzor, I set up with Garchomp and I swept the entire team, defeating the easy battle tower and getting a lot of money for it. I wasn't going to do the other ones right now because I now had a decent grasp on what to do with my team. Day 76, I was nearly ready for the gyms. However, I wanted to do one other thing first. I wanted to at least try and do an insane hunt. My whole theme here was to be a Pokemon Hunter, and I can't not give it a shot. The requirements were insane, but the rewards were nutty, so let's try it. The hunt ended up being for a male Heracross that was naughty or timid nature. My plan for the nature was to get a synchronized Abra. Abra were really easy to catch, and synchronized guaranteed that I got the same nature as Abra, so I went to the end and caught every single one that I saw. And this took a while. I caught so many Abras, like so many Abras. No one man should have all these Abras, but I did and it was crazy. After ages of hunting, I got the naughty synchronized Abra. I immediately went and trained this thing on Blissey's because I wanted it to be as strong as possible. I got it to level 72 and decided that it was good enough, and then I went to the Safari Zone. I wasn't sure if Pokemon that spawned here worked for the hunt, but I had to try. And while I was there, I found a shiny Spoink immediately. Like, that's crazy luck. My first ever random shiny, and I actually really enjoy shiny Spoink. But back to the matter at hand, Heracross. I went to the jungle area and I caught every male Heracross that I saw. Then 
And finally, after like an hour of hunting, I caught a runt Heracross with 80% IVs. This met all of the requirements and it did let me submit it for the hunt. I won a random legendary and it ended up being a really good Zekra. That was really cool and I was kind of feeling ambitious so I did a hard hunt too. The hard hunt was for Wobbuffet and that was pretty easy. I went to the end and just ran in circles for like half an hour until I finally found a male Wobbuffet. The first one that I caught was the right size and I claimed the hunt and I got two great keys. I opened them and I got a destiny knot and a god axe. Okay, now it is gym time. It turns out that I'm not allowed to do the player gyms on video so their strats don't get revealed so instead we're going to do these NPC gyms. There were 18 NPC gyms in total and after completing all of them I get another random shiny. So let's start it off with the bug gym leader. His Pokemon were surprisingly strong. A quiver dance Volcarona and a mega pincer but no match for me. His last Pokemon was Shuckle, which I weakened a ton with Water Pulse Glaceon, and then I finished it off with my Beedrill, defeating the Bug Gym Leader. Next up was the Grass Gym Leader, and I should have a fairly easy time here because my team was very good against Grass. And yeah, it was not that hard of a fight. In the end, Magearna just crushed him. His final Pokemon was Apple Time, which was a Dragon type, which is weak to Fairy, so I just used Fleur Cannon and destroyed it. Grass Gym beaten. Next was Fire, and I was not very confident in a Fire gym battle because my team was very weak to it. I was even more worried when I realized that it was a double battle. However, I did have the two gods that were Salamence and Garchomp. They put in tons of work, picking out most of the team on their own. After Salamence went down, I was a little bit worried that Garchomp wouldn't be able to win, but I was very wrong. With Earthquake and Scale Shot, Garchomp was able to completely destroy the entire team, even if it was burned, with a little support from Decidueye, of course. Next up was Water, and my team should body Water right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. This gym leader's Mega Swamper and Tapu Fini had different plans though, and my team ended up getting crushed. I had to wait a while to try the Water Gym again, so I moved on to the Fighting Gym. Yeah, I uh, actually lost that one too. How was I supposed to know their Meta Cham was going to Mega Evolve turn one and kill Salamence? Okay, fine, let's try Poison. This one was easy mode. I let off with Beedrill, which went down to a Crobat, and then I went into Magearna. I used Shift Gear twice to make myself faster, and then I completely swept all six of their Pokemon. Magearna's kinda OP, but I love it. Next up was the normal type gym leader, and I had no fighting type move, so I expected it to be pretty difficult. However, I did not expect it to be this difficult. I tried to sweep with Magearna again, but my Flirt Cannon missed, so that didn't work. And that miss definitely cost me the whole battle because I ended up getting completely destroyed by the Choice Scarf Tauros. That is three battles that I lost. NPCs or not, these gyms were no joke. I was a bit upset at that point, so I went to the flying gym, led Magearna, and just clicked shift gear and completely swept. Once again, all six Pokemon obliterated by Magearna. I go to look for the dark type gym leader, and I, I couldn't find him at all. I had to have my boy Leo here help me out because I was completely lost. Turns out that I just didn't see an elevator right in the middle of the floor, so that's kind of on me. I thought my Magearna was going to be able to sweep this guy, but no. Magearna did do some work, but it was actually my Beedrill that came in and destroyed every single Pokemon on their team. Beedrill the Ghost. Psychic Gym next. This one was another surprisingly tough battle. It was another double battle and they had all kinds of really annoying moves like light screen and recovery moves and a bunch of other annoying stuff, but in the end, Magearna came in clutch and beat the Chrysalia with a Fleur Cannon letting me win the battle. Barely, but a win's a win. The Steel type gym was up next, and honestly, it was way harder than I thought it would be. I wanted to sweep with Garchomp, but unfortunately, they had priority moves, and that just did not work out. I ended up getting down to my last Pokemon, and if it wasn't for a lucky critical hit from Beedrill, this Iron Defense Duraldon would have destroyed me. After Steel comes Electric. I bodied their Tapu Koko with Mega Beedrill, and then their Raichu bodies me right back. The battle was a bit of a back and forth, but my Garchomp managed to take out most of their team. That is is until the very end when the Mega Ampharos takes out Garchomp, and the battle had to once again be saved by, you guessed it, Magearna. This Pokemon is busted. The next gym was Ice, and you know what Ice is weak to? Magearna. Yeah, Magearna just one-shot everything that it hit. It wasn't even a fair fight. The next gym was Dragon, and I expected Magearna to carry again because it was a fairy steel type, but no. Magearna ended up getting taken out by their choice scarfed Garchomp, and it was a Beedrill of all things that carried. Their final two Pokemon were Mega Altaria and Latios, and Beedrill was perfect for both of those. The gym after that was fairy, and once again I thought Magearna would sweep, but somehow this Hatterene lives a flash cannon and takes me out. Yeah, this one ended up being carried mostly 
mostly by Decidueye and Beedrill, once again Beedrill being a god, but Decidueye doing work is pretty cool to see. And I was getting to use all of my Pokemon and not just one, so that was nice. The ghost type gym was probably the easiest one so far, mostly getting swept by Beedrill. Beedrill was proving its worth in these battles for sure. It did eventually go down, but Magearna and Garchomp were there for the cleanup. One of the final gyms that I had not taken on. The ground gym. I wanted Glaceon to come in clutch for this one, but instead I ended up getting bodied so hard that I questioned my entire Pokemon Master career. It wasn't even close. The Gliscor and Garchomp just crushed me. I didn't even see half of their team. However, it had been more than enough time by now, so I went back to re-challenge the water gym. And absolutely won. Let's go, Magearna, carrying me once again. Okay, fighting gym rematch was surprisingly close. I thought I could take them out super easily if I led Magearna, but I was wrong. Most of my team ended up getting destroyed by the Scrafty of all things. Beedrill once again came in clutch though, it was just way too fast and strong not to save these battles. Okay, the normal gym rematch. I was stalled out for a Snorlax for a bit, but between Mega Beedrill's speed and Glaceon's power, I was able to defeat the normal gym as well. And then finally, I went back to the ground gym. And once again, stood zero chance. I just could not beat them. It was way too hard. I had to rethink my team a little bit. I spent the next while running around to different shops to grab berries and other stuff, and then I Eevee trained my Glaceon in speed. My idea was to just Choice Scarf Glaceon so I outsped all the ground types and destroyed them with Blizzard. I also gave some berries to my other Pokemon to help them survive the attacks. After all that team stuff, it was time to re-challenge the ground type gym. It was a single battle now, and I'm not sure why, but I'm definitely not complaining because it makes it way easier. My team changes were perfect for this gym, and I absolutely crushed every single one of their ground types. Glaceon, of course, carried because it is the best Pokemon of all time. I now had one gym left the Rock Gym. It was bugged out earlier, so I had to wait for it to get fixed, but now it was ready. Except I was not ready because I got crushed. I was going to set up with Garchomp and Sweep, but their Shuckle had a red card and it made my Garchomp switch out and wasted all of my boosts. I got all the way through all of their legendary Pokemon and their Mega Tyranitar and all of that, but then this Nihiligo at the end had a Choice Scarf and outsped my Beedrill, beating me. I then sort of just had to wait. I wasn't really sure what else to do, but just run around and look at Pokemon while waiting for the gym to let me challenge it again. I did a medium hunt while waiting, and oh boy, Abra. Never caught one of those before, right? <laughs> I knocked out that hunt real quick in the end, and I got an incense. Not great at this point, but not bad. I went back to the gym leader, and this time I led Beedrill. This made them leave in Tyranitar, letting me take it out super early. That made the entire battle easier, and I was able to beat the rest of their Pokemon with ease of once again using Magearna to beat the final Pokemon. I collected my rewards and now I had tons of rare candies and of course the shiny key. I opened it and I got a shiny Mantine. Not the best, but I'll take the free shiny to symbolize my conquering of all 18 gyms. We are now on the final few days of this Pixelmon adventure. I had one final thing that I wanted to do and I wanted to use my Cosmic Yveltal for it. I spent the next few days EV training it and leveling it up. I also used the Pokemon builder to change the pokeball and make it the biggest size this thing was huge now now my goal was to get as far as i could in these battle towers i didn't expect to make it very far but i wanted to try i did the easy one before so now it was time for normal the first guy was pretty easy outside of this mill tank that just would not go down once it ran out of milk drink i was able to win the battle really easily but screw that mill tank then the second guy i stood zero chance i got absolutely sweat it was not even a close battle. I barely got through any of his Pokemon and my entire team was just Rush. So, uh, yeah, I actually am unable to take on the tower again for another 24 hours, and I didn't really have time for that, so I guess that's the end of my battle tower run. I guess I didn't become the strongest like I wanted. These battle towers were kind of insane. Maybe if you play yourself, you can train up a good team to beat them, and if you do, let me know in the comments, because I will definitely be impressed. I finished off the final day by placing statues of all of my memorable Pokemon around my base. The server owner told me that they were going to set up a warp so you can come to my base and maybe build like a city around it so if you want to do that definitely check it out but for now my pixelmon journey has come to an end that was 100 days in pixelmon we had a great run some amazing pokemon and in all honesty the server was pretty cool 
play.anubismc.com. Super fun, and I really enjoyed the entire time playing on it. Like, seriously, they are not telling me to say this or anything, this server has something for everyone. Whether you want to battle, catch Pokemon, grind out quests, just play for fun, you can do whatever you want on the server and get rewarded for it. But yeah, enough fanboying over the server, thank you everyone for watching, be sure to like and sub and comment and all that, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.